Hey what is up my Amphibia fans, and today shouldn't take up too much of your time. These two were mainly character progression episodes, but you know that there's always still something to discuss about. And you know what? Enough introductions, let's roll that film. It all starts with Marcy waking up from out of the same family wagon the planters used for vacating over to Newtopia, since Anne already had dibs inside of the basement. We can already see that Marcy is more than ecstatic to not only meet the townsfolk, but to get their approval. And let me just say that I was surprised to see her for once screw up. I understand in a big way how she messed up, however, she probably never read the sign before entering the town. Because just like Anne had to learn when first getting accustomed to Wartwood and the people there, she'll only gradually begin to earn everyone's respect. Especially Miss Croker, that lady is the boss of pretty much everybody. Zip it, Toadstool! We'll get to you. Yes, ma'am. Marcy eventually runs into Mayor Toadstool, who recognizes the small adjustments she makes to the town in order to somewhat improve it. Something she's already well known for doing, even in Utopia of all places as well. And does try to warn Marcy of Mayor Toadstool, who obviously does what he does, usually in order to get himself re-elected. He's slowly becoming a better character, yet his schemes don't seem to cease. Neither does him of using Toady. Anyways, Toadstool has has an idea in hopes that apparently not only having benefits for the townspeople, but also both for him and Marcy. And in hopes of making this dream become a reality, she ignores Anne's advice and leaving it alone, and instead stays up overnight improving the entire infrastructure of the town. Which in the end becomes a disaster, as Marcy herself had revealed that the town had been built to specifically remain within the weight capacity of the swamp Wartwood is built on top of. And once again, seeing Marcy of all people mess up this much came as a bit of a shock. Now thankfully she manages to keep everyone safe thanks to Joe Sparrow and the reduction of all those random statues and marble buildings. Of course everyone is ticked off at Marcy for what she did but they do realize that she's practically walking in the same steps as Anne. Where even though she at first is difficult to accept, they soon will recognize her for who she is. But all that's nice and all but it really gets you to think, could it be possible that the town was purposely built in this area in order to keep the poor living in these conditions, even if they did have the resources to make it better? Marcy already explained that the founders knew of the weight limit, but it just sounds pretty dumb. I mean, it's like sinkholes that have the inevitability of unfortunately sinking buildings and other matters. Why in the world would you even chant something like that in any area? I mean, betcha Newtopia doesn't have a single place that has a problem like that. Coincidentally, the rich are always safe. Part B is officially the episode of the Robot Frog's introduction to the planters, which I for one am thankful for because who else is sick of seeing all these teasers of this toaster? And that's not an insult, I mean, it literally can produce toast. But I shouldn't be getting ahead of myself too much. Once again, this was a mighty simplistic episode and straight to the point. It all begins with Anne, Marcy, and the planters all ride along to, and I kid you not, an actual seed store that apparently interests Marcy as well. But before entering, Hopadaya tells both Anne and Sprague to look over Polly while they're inside. Possibly a reference to Hot Pot for when in the first episode he placed Polly in charge of the cart before heading out. And not only is it a direct reference to the very first episode, but it also shows the growth and responsibility from the characters both Sprague and Anne. Especially Sprig, surprisingly. Polly, however, once again is in an attention hoarding mood, so she decides to try and cause catastrophe to not only distract both Anne and Sprig long enough to allow her to escape, but for her to get into even more mayhem. Leading up to the confrontation between her and Frobo, who surprisingly comes across as innocent and goofy, and soon begins to help Polly wreck the entire town and their water fountain. Things also begin to escalate once Frobo tries to impress the crowd with his laser eyes and attacking whoever may be a potential threat to Polly. This, of course, upsets the townsfolk for the 50th time by at least one of the planters, and Polly for the first time takes responsibility for the actions of someone else, understanding the same feelings Sprig and Anne go through when taking care for her. She then asks Hot Pop if she could still keep Frobo as if he were her younger brother, due to his somewhat immature and naive nature. He mainly only accepts once he realizes what a big help he more than likely can be when he say for example plants crops for him. Also, he toasts bread. That's all he needed to do to convince me, really. Anne and Sprig soon ponder over the idea of the robot potentially being one of the creations from the ruins earlier this season, but they just brush off the thought, thinking that it traveling hundreds of miles would be improbable. Now, what we can get from this is that the robot has the capabilities of flight, speech, and of course, plenty of defensive and offensive maneuvers. The only person that I believe in Amphibia that may have any connections into knowing anything about it and its origins is none other than King Andreas or some of the other rare people 
a Newtopia. Just as we were revealed within a sneak peek promo that we will be seeing a wise Newt who guides them. Someone who clearly not only has secrets, but more knowledge about his surroundings than what he's displaying. Plus, he seemed to have certain technological advances within the same secret bunker he met up with the shadow ghost-like creature, and yeah quite similar feeling to the ancient ruins. But back to the robot frog, I believe that it'll become a big help in their future adventures, especially when completing the trials for the temples. However, I could be wrong. I still believe as if the frog robot was some sort of either a military invention for war or some sort of a spy tool, though the first assumption sounds more accurate. I also believe that King Andrus will have some knowledge on what exactly it is. They didn't exactly question him about the ruins they found while visiting inside of his kingdom. Then again, would he have even given them straight answers? Well, I guess we're gonna have to find out sometime in the future, ladies and gents. This has been ya boy, the next big thing. Back with another analysis. And so I will catch you all again after I'm finished dishing out another video. And I'll see you all till then. Peace.